Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and in this video we're going to show the construction of a uh, Cushcraft uh, 2 meter 10 element uh, beam antenna. We'll have the specific model number listed below. Uh, it's one that they currently sell, and it's uh, a pretty decently rated uh, antenna, and this is just part of my ongoing efforts to not only reach our club repeater, uh, which for me is about just over 60 miles away, uh, south uh, southwest of, of me. But also, as you can see in the picture, uh, right past this hill, <laughs> right behind my house, and the new construction on the hill. Uh, and then also over uh, varied terrain, uh, there's pretty good elevation changes between here and there, uh, being central Kentucky and the, the, the rolling hills of uh, central Kentucky. Here in the Google Maps, you can see the uh, direct line of of the distance, 60 and a half miles, and uh, there on the left-hand side, you can sort of see some of the terrain changes going on there. But uh, what I have uh, been discovering, and, and we've had a series of videos that sort of sort of talked about this, uh, you know, it's a pretty good distance. Uh, I had a copper J pole. Uh, I could occasionally hear uh, the uh, the repeater down there. Uh, it was very difficult to, and usually impossible to really talk on it. Moved to a three-element Yagi. Things got better, uh, not great, but they got better. Got it up a little higher in the air. Six element Yagi was pretty good until this construction started. So um, the 10 element, I think, is really going to be a big help. And as we'll see uh, towards the end of the video with the testing and so forth, um, and the the short period of time I've used it so far, uh, it's working, of course, more or less as expected, much, much better. So hopefully I uh, won't need to, to take any further drastic actions to, to just maintain my content with the, uh, the repeater and maybe even I'll start running some nets to, uh, to give folks a break on that. So that's pretty much it. We'll dive right into the build content in the next section. All right, folks, here we are just at the beginning of the build process. Just wanted to bring you folks in, bring you up to date. The only thing we've done so far is we've put together the three main components to the mast. There's three approximately four foot sections. It's about 12 feet. And the directions are very easy for this part. The main thing with this particular antenna is you measure here at the end, 13 and a half inches is one side, 19 inches between those two points is the other side. To put the three sections together, you have this slit section. You measure up two inches on the end points and you clamp it down. So we just do that on each side. So that gets us started there. And then on this side again, it's 19 inches between the, uh, the first set of holes. So that's sort of your left and your right, if you will. Now I laid everything out, counted all the parts, checked against the master part list, and guess what? <laughs> it looks like we're short some parts. Uh, there is some extras and some things, and most stuff looks fine, but it's these little 832nd nuts. We have plenty of washers, and I actually have washers I could use for that. But I don't have any nuts, so it looks like we have about half the number we're supposed to have. So... If that turns out to be the case, I'll uh, make a, a trip to the hardware store and pick some of those up. There's our connector assembly. There's a little tuning rod that comes with these Cushcraft antennas. If we look at the 70 centimeter, we can see it's got a little one of those too. And you can move the main tube assembly up and down to help tune, get a gamma match on the antenna. So we're going to work a little bit, put on the first element or two. You use the uh, half washers, use these saddle, sort of saddle connectors, and then these 832nd 2 inch and 1 and 3 quarter inch screws. So we'll uh, bring you along for the ride as we work on this antenna. Of course, there's the main clamp, clamping block, and the uh, U-brackets once you're ready to mount to your mast and there's all the elements slightly different lengths this is another part for an antenna like this even the shorter ones three three to six elements and beyond 
you just want to make sure you get your elements in the correct order right the thick one that's your main your main uh, exciter and then you got your elements but they're uh, they're all slightly different links so I've got them laid out there and you'll just put them on in order the uh, the main tube there so we'll see in a minute it goes in the number two position on what I'm going to call the left hand side this is the one that measures 13 and a half inches you'll have your longest element here and then you'll have that main element right there and that's also where the gamma match goes in there so that's this is the side that's 13 and a half inches so we're gonna do a couple more steps and we'll bring you folks right back all right folks just a quick update we've now got the uh, so 239 connector mounted it's on a sort of a partial bracket there and you use one of the two inch 832nd screws one of the sort of saddle brackets and one of the um, number eight lock washers and 832nd nuts and then we're going to be mounting the gamma match uh, here to the screw base uh, of that and then also connecting it with the specialized brackets right there to the uh, the main driven element again that helps us to uh, be able to match and and get a good SWR on the antenna so I'm going to put that part on next and we'll bring you folks right back again this is uh, starting in hole number two in the main mast and again this is the section that measures for this particular antenna 13 and a half inches so you have to pay attention in these directions for these uh, these beam antennas and things to make sure you've got all the right dimensions and all the right spots so we're going to put on that uh, gamma match little trombone and we'll bring you folks right back all right folks we're back we now have the gamma match trombone temporarily uh, mounted you just screw it on to the back of the SO239 connector with a lock washer and a nut and then it has those kind of saddle uh, brackets that you just bolt together in the center now this is just temporary for now because again this outer aluminum tube you can kind of barely see it there's an inner nylon or plastic tube you slide the outer aluminum tube up and down so that you can get your match and then you would kind of lock it in place so once we're ready to put this on the uh, mast outside and uh, and get it up a little ways I won't try to do it all the way raised but at least get it into uh, close to the uh, the final position uh, where it'll be uh, mounted uh, then we'll double check things and uh, double check the SWR and that kind of stuff so uh, and you can see there's also a clear plastic washer right there to help uh, isolate things so um, uh, just another step here we'll uh, probably look I think the next section is to put on the very first and longest reflector element which goes all the way at this end again what I call the left hand side where we have the 13 and a half inch uh, section here and then on the right hand side it comes out to a 19 inch section between them but uh, I think the next step is to put that uh, that first longest element on We'll see about that and uh, bring you folks right back all right folks just wanted to kind of show this uh, I've got this little tape measure laid out uh, again as you begin to work with the actual elements make sh absolutely sure with a, uh, a Yagi like this a beam that you're using the right elements in the right spot uh, in this case the number one element which will go behind the driven element right in the very end the hole there is 40 and 5 16 inches they have a nice diagram of all 10 elements there so this is one of those things the mounting of each one of these elements um, using that center part right there is the same so they show you basically how to do it the first time and then outline putting each element in line uh, down the uh, length of the antenna uh, as you can see in the the next page They show how to put on this first element. Your directions may vary. This is a Kushcraft. But then they just show you the order of the elements and the holes right there. So uh, one of those things, take your time. It's not very difficult. Uh, just measure things when they say to measure things and, uh, and just watch them. 
and uh, the build should go nice and nice and smoothly. So we're going to get this first element on, um, maybe do one or two more, uh, but we'll be bringing you folks right back. All right, folks, here we are with another quick update. Uh, we've got the uh, third um, element on. You can see using one of the um, half washers, the element, one of the saddle brackets. This is one of the one and three quarter inch screws, eight thirty second screws. Uh, washer and nut, just like we did the first one. So we've got the first one on the end, the driven element. So you have the reflector driven element, and the first of the uh, the other elements. They all mount the same way, so uh, we're going to be working on this. I am going to have to go get some uh, eight thirty seconds uh, nuts. Uh, not too big a deal, just a little bit inconvenient. Uh, but the rest of the assembly should go just like that. Uh, get all the holes are uh, pre-drilled. Very nicely finished. Uh, so we're going to work. It looks like I have pretty much all the rest of the uh, hardware I'll need, uh, including the mounting brackets for the mast. So we're going to go grab some 832 uh, nuts and uh, put on the rest of these elements, and we'll bring you folks back after we have that done. All right, folks, we are back from our errand, and we now have a supply of 832 little nuts to uh, continue on and we had got down to the last one that came in the pack and we need several more so we're going to just continue putting on the uh, the elements like we've done before it's the very same parts and technique very simple uh, again basically just measure the elements make sure you're going in the right direction uh, along the mast and putting the right length in the right spot that's pretty much it so we're going to continue on with this and we'll bring you folks back in just a few minutes all right, folks. Well, we got our new uh, 830 second nuts, and we were able to go ahead and attach the rest of the elements on our 12 foot boom. Got those all figured out now. They all attach the same way uh, that we showed you earlier with the, uh, I think they call that a half washer and the uh, sort of saddle bracket, a screw, and then just an 830 second nut and little lock washer. So now have this in place, ready to go. So uh, once it warms up just a little bit, we'll see about uh, getting it outside. I'm gonna bring the mask down, the push-up mask we've done the video on. Take the six element Yagi off and we will Put this one up and see about testing it. All right, folks, here we are. We've got the mounting plate on. You use the large set of the horseshoe brackets and the sharp cutouts to mount to the main mast. And then we'll come back through these additional holes with the smaller U-bolts to mount on the antenna itself. So we're gonna work on that and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're back. We've got the antenna mounted. You just use the two sets of horseshoe brackets. The heavy-duty ones come in from the back, mount to the mast itself. The slightly smaller ones mount to hold the boom itself. And I've also got the LMR400 marine-grade UV-resistant uh, connection made. And uh, the initial zip ties up there, nice, big, heavy-duty UV-resistant zip ties. So while we're still down on the mast, down low, I'm going to go ahead and go upstairs and begin checking the SWR and see if we're going to need to adjust that gamma match, that short little tube right there, and make any adjustments. So uh, may even still be able to reach a repeater or two with this orientation down this low. We'll see. But we're going to go do some testing and bring you folks right back. All right, folks. Well, we brought the antenna back down after successful testing yesterday. We uh, put on some anti-seize on the connector and using some sealing tape, rubberized tape on the connectors. We've also got 70 centimeter put up and the same thing. Put some anti-seize on the connector and uh, rubberized sealing tape. So we're going to be finishing the install of the 70 centimeters for now running our LMR 400 marine grade around to the front of the house 
and hopefully doing a successful test of both antennas once they're back up in the normal position. So we're going to work on finishing that up and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, here we're taking a look at the two meter 10 element Yagi antenna. We can see that as it's um, uh, lowered on the mast, but on the mast, so it's up about 12 feet, uh, but where we can still reach it to, uh, to tune the ready match or the gamma match. We can see that at the uh, frequency of our repeater, 146.88, uh, it's about 3.49. Uh, obviously, we'd like to get it down quite a bit lower than that, but it's definitely, I think, in the range of something we can work with with that uh, gamma match or ready match little uh, tuning. So we'll uh, go out and take a look at that and come back and check it again, see if we can make that a little bit better. All right, here we are, folks, testing the 2-meter 10-element uh, Yagi. It's about 12 feet off the ground right now. I've got the mass lowered uh, far enough to where I can, uh, can reach it and work on it. Also doing some work on the 70-centimeter 11-element Yagi. But we can see that here at our target frequency for our particular repeater, 14688, uh, 1.59 to 1, which is not uh, horrible by any means. That's a, a very usable SWR. But if we play with that gamma match or ready match a little bit, we might even get that a little bit better. So we'll go out and check on that and bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're back. And as you can see at our target frequency, 146880, 1.45 to 1, not bad at all, not bad at all. About 120 feet of LMR 400 uh, cable and uh, AB switch in the way there. So that'll probably do it for today. We'll uh, maybe revisit this in the spring when the weather's a little bit nicer and it's not quite so cold outside. But that'll do it for the 2 meter 10 element Yagi repeater. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. 73. All right, folks, just a quick little addendum to this video. Uh, while I was editing this video, uh, sitting here at, uh, in the shack, I actually heard a summits on the air, a soda activation come through on the uh, national call frequency, uh, 520, and responded to, uh, to that person and uh, was able to give them a, a contact. Uh, and they said they were about 40 miles away, southwest of where I am, which is roughly the, the uh, direction the uh, antenna is pointing uh, towards our club repeater. And they were on a 5-watt handy talkie using a handheld uh, beam antenna as well. So uh, just a, uh, an interesting course. It just popped up, and I didn't get a chance to record it, but... Uh, just a fun little uh, example of how strong, obviously, beam antennas can be. So that's it. Uh, we'll see you folks in the next video. 73.